Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the return of Chop Talk, return of me and Melball to the channel. Uh, we've it's been a little bit. Uh, we're back. We're here to talk some RCW regeneration from this past Friday that we attended in Edmonton, Alberta on mm -hmm. August the 30th. <laughs> yes, it was the 30th. Yeah, 30th. Yeah, August 30th. It's a good, it's a good show. I had, I had a lot of fun there. I am your co-host, Andresi. Right over here is the magnificent Mel Ball. How you doing, Mel Ball? I am doing pretty okay, Andre. It's been it's Labor Day today. It's ungodly hot outside for yeah. September. Um, mm -hmm. I looked at my phone before going on here. 30 degrees outside. It's a little it's a little warm. I am regretting wearing sweatpants right now. Um, <laughs> how are you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm doing good. I was gonna do yard work. Uh, today but then i decided no i'm, I'm good <laughs> my my property is at like my condo townhouse thing or whatever it is they're doing the lawn right now and i was hearing them blowing all the grass and stuff around and i heard someone yelling at them as per usual because it isn't my area if somebody isn't putting their nose in, in what's going on mm -hmm. <laughs> ah gotta love e-town and their crazies yeah <laughs> but andre we need to talk about this show because holy heck and fracking shit first of all though you have people to talk about don't you we have sponsors like this guy oh yeah i want to thank our friends over at a plus productions uh teaming up with us for dropping all of our our, G our japanese wrestling content in audio form over there uh a plus productions.com or A Plus Productions on Facebook. Check them out. We have three different feeds there. There is a sports feed. If you want uh, all your non-wrestling sports related content, will be over there. There is the entertainment feed, which will cover everything else that's not sports or wrestling. And then there is a wrestling feed, which is professional wrestling, obviously. Maybe <laughs> somebody, maybe one day we'll have a some amateur wrestling. Maybe we'll have an amateur wrestling feed. I don't know, but it, hey. it's all there. But that would be that would be in sports, so because it is yeah. amateur, yeah. Yeah, all that's covered over at aplusproductions.com. And then I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in here if you're watching us on video. Thank you so very much, whether it's Backbreaker Video or Andre Mabalorsa Talk. Thank you so very much. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below because we love hearing from you. We love talking to you. We love chatting it up about professional wrestling. Uh, don't forget to share us out there, friends, family, and uh, crazy people who tend to notice every little thing and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time i drop a new video oh no it has nothing to do with you <laughs> but i do i do mm. ding dong <laughs> hello. hello hello we have to first say something very important about this show that we're going to reiterate throughout the show and that is that this show was fracking phenomenal Yep, it was. And it had everything to do with the fact that there was no Team Steve booked. I, I disagree with her. Team Steve should have been there. We all know it. Come on, they're the tag champions. You gotta have the tag. I'm kidding. Fuck Team Steve. I was gonna say, how many <laughs> edibles did you have before coming on here, my guy, to be so Delulu in your Kaflulu? Kaflulu? Oh. Yeah, sure. It's It rhymes with Delulu. Okay. I've been saying that a hot minute. You just got onto that? I never noticed you say Cthulhu before. It's like Cthulhu, but like human brain. <laughs> oh, nothing makes sense anymore. No. It, it, it would have had to make sense at some point to begin with, my guy. And, there, and, and speaking of the fact that the tag champions weren't on the show, there was no tag matches at all. This is a straight up all singles match card it was it was yeah. and it was great considering yeah. oh yeah mm -hmm. so we kick it off with the rcw common british commonwealth championship it is kamikaze defending against the headline sean martin's mm -hmm. mel's second favorite wrestler in rcw <laughs> jesus Christ. that man terrifies me you didn't even realize what his catchphrase was Ooga booga. Yeah. You're like, he said ooga booga. I'm like, dude, that's been on his merch a hot minute. Come on now. <laughs> I don't own his merch, so I don't know that. Well, yeah. every promo he's been cutting, he also has it in the background. Yeah. So. Uh, Cam 
Cam uh, come jumping off the top during his entrance, not hurting his knee. I had to say it. I had to say it. <laughs> he didn't. It's factual. Stating facts. It doesn't matter. Cam hits this really good combo with the drop kick. Then he kips up, does a front flip, and then jumps on the Martins and monkey flips him across the ring. I thought just great little combo there. I just like it's just, yeah. He's uh, like a little tigger. He's just got springs in his feet. He really does. Um Cam with the inverted atomic drop at one point into the cartwheel elbow in the corner, and then hits a second a turn on buckle cross body for two. Um Sean getting some really vicious offense and you're just just throwing in the, the like the beatdowns he was getting throughout this match mm-hmm. and just like how vicious he is when he's just working over just just punching him and just kicking him. just how, how vicious he really is is kind of crazy um very, good heel. very uh cam misses a dive off the top sean then picks him up blue thunder bomb but only gets two uh, that was finish- like a Takeshka level blue thunderbolt too. Yeah. Like that thing thudded. Yeah, we get to the end of this match. Uh, Cam goes to the top, but uh, Sean Martin crotches him up top. He goes for the super black, gets pushed off, and Kamikaze hits the somersault leg drop for the win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have honestly like like this match to go a tiny bit longer. Mm-hmm. I, I actually really enjoyed this opener. It was a great energy. Especially coming in with the extreme face of Kamikaze and the extreme heel energy of of Sean Martin's, I felt they worked very, very well together. I do enjoy seeing these two face off, and I hear that they've been kind of facing off also in, in other places, um, in a tag kind of capacity with um, Martin's and Sydney Steele, I believe, mm-hmm. um, tagging up against Kamikaze and somebody else. I want to say it's Mac. I'm not entirely sure. But in PPW, um, yeah, phenomenal work together. Um, yeah, it wasn't. What else is there to say? Like that, Sean Martin's a very, very good heel, and you know he intimidates the fuck out of me with that freaking his tone, his voice, just the mannerisms that he brings out. They're very, very good. But then you have the exact opposite with Kamikaze, where he's just so excitable. The kids loved him. The kids were out in power tonight, too. Mm -hmm. I've never seen so many children at the show. And it it kind of ended up being funny. Well, was bigger in the show. Well, it's better with the children this time than than it was last time we were we talked about RCW with a child getting involved. (laughs) Yeah, which was ignorant. Yeah. um, on those people and the parents part, but I digress. I don't think we saw that child there. I don't remember seeing him, but no, no, no. it was pretty it was busy. Fun. It was pretty gosh darn busy. It was packed. It was packed. Almost every seat was full. Yep. Almost. There was only like a handful of seats that were empty. Chuck came my yep. gym mentor and 70 year old bodybuilder friend Chuck from the gym came. That was freaking cool. And, and Jason Rutledge was there, which we didn't get a goddamn picture with him. Yes, we really? did. What are you talking about? We? Oh, we did. We did it at the end. Or intermission or something. You're right. You're right. I'm wrong. You're right. I'm wrong. Yeah. And wasn't it on your phone? Yeah, because you didn't have your phone. Yeah, I forgot my phone. No, so now I'm know. checking because I don't remember taking a picture. Oh, so Andreas, Andreas took a picture. I posed for a picture. So, like, someone took it. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> <clears throat> Someone's still Delulu in the Kaflulu. I still don't know what Kaflulu is, but okay. He's your brain, boy. My brain anyway. is called my brain, not Kaflulu. I'll call your brain whenever I want. Let's move on to the next match because this show just kept getting better and better. We move on to a singles contest between Jack O'Connor, our boy. I love yes. this man. Versus the, the King Bright of the Six, K. B6. Again, these two, I thought KB6 just dominating early. Mm-hmm. Uh, he ended up sending him to the uh, Jack to the floor, hits a plancha over the top. Uh, dude, uh, but when Jack got in control, dodging out of the way of the stinger splash and his starts hitting k- k- the kicks and the suplexes, and then he gets like a gut wrench suplex. It's just so good. Mm-hmm. That gut wrench was a, a pop for me because I was like, oh my God, it's Minoru Suzuki. Yes. Yeah, he, he ended up seating him in the corner. 
a, a seating KB6 in the corner, and then he backs up. I'm like, oh, he's going to do a hesitation drop kick, and he did one. And I was like, yes! He did. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, just it, KB6 just ha- ha- having some incredible offense in this match. Mm-hmm. Uh, he stops Jack O'Connor up top, and he hits a beautiful superplex at one point. Um, he gets a great kick combination into that step up, like step off the back into the leg drop. Like if you think curb stomp, like you look like he's going to do a curb stomp, but he jumps off the back and come down with the leg drop, mm-hmm, gets mm-hmm. a two, then hits the sky high spine buster for two. Uh, he goes for the death Valley driver, but Jack slips off the shoulders, gets into the choke on his back, but KB six slams him into the corner and picks him back up on the shoulders. It's a death Valley driver, but only gets two. Uh, Jack comes back, hitting kicks, uh, gets the rear naked choke, but KB6 uh, slams them down into a pin. One, two, Jack kicks out and immediately locks the choke on again, gets the hooks in, and KB6 is forced to submit. Yeah. Yes. I loved the story that was told in this, whether it was purposeful or just inadvertent. The clash of styles in this with the power of KB6 versus that technical intelligence of Jack O'Connor, it ended up just combining so nicely and telling this just power struggle of two men fighting for that win. I absolutely loved it, but most importantly, I love the sportsmanship that we saw at the beginning and the end of the match with these guys shaking hands. It was so perfect. I absolutely loved it. This was a phenomenal match, and it just kept getting better. Yeah. Again, I thought that the the technical aspect from Jack O'Connor. Again, he 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 is uh, he is in terms of MMA, but uh, he has multiple martial arts and wrestling background, Mm -hmm. like amateur wrestling background. So his technical ability and his striking is absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then KB six, the power and the speed that that man has to go along with his power Mm -hmm. and just just the dynamic ability that he has in there just to put everything together is absolutely phenomenal. And these two just came together just to create such an amazing match. And honestly, as much as I love the rest of the show, this might've been my most, my favorite match of the night. I wouldn't fault you on that. Um, what I also really like about KB six is like, for, like when I first started watching RCW regularly with you, he was, he was, he was there. Um, we've watched him kind of go through the feud with Mac where he's kind of evolved a little bit more, um, where they had that like submission pop off match. Mm-hmm. Then we saw them um, in the him in the Rumble. You know, he's showing that he can tag with people. He's been working very like in the Rumble match in January. He was teaming a little bit with Dalton, and it looked really really good. But since then, we've seen him really step into that singles kind of competition. We've seen him have these amazing matches with people who we know, you know, are. are good but sometimes they struggle he elevates his opponents as much as he elevates himself and to me that is a very good quality for a wrestler to have because they you know that the match is going to be good irregardless of who is on the other side of the ring from them for sure again he he just has the innate ability and then when he's in there with a guy like a nate nicks and like like other people he he rides us to their level like he has mm-hmm. he and he it's not like he, does, he dro- drops but he brings people up to his level and mm-hmm. when there is somebody that might have that little bit above he he, he climbs and he fights absolutely. his way up he says i'm just as good and mm-hmm. i i think he's absolutely phenomenal mm-hmm. the only thing i would love to see a little bit more out of him is some more self-promotion i think that's yeah. something i would like to see out of you know everybody yeah in these promotions because there's a distinct lack of it and it's like if aew wwe roh impact all that shit if that is the goal i mean are you not watching the shows that you want to be on because every single week people are cutting promos whether it's on the show whether it's vignettes they're cutting freaking promos. Do you remember back when Bobby and uh, Bobby Sharp and Cody Mack were having their feuds and they were actually having like backstage segments in RCW? Mm-hmm. That was freaking interesting. That was what put both of those guys on my radar. I was like, ooh, they're doing something different. Mm-hmm. I feel like KB6 could benefit a lot. Cause like I feel like a lot of the crowd was there specifically for him because this was one of the loudest matches of Mm -hmm. the night 
And I feel like a lot of it was because he brought in that crowd. I would love yeah. to see some more self-promotion from him to make even more like that show. These venues should be packed like that every single fracking show. I'm trying to wrap my head around why this show was busier than Leo Rush. Don't know what it was, but <laughs> like, you know, so like, yeah, I would love to see just like, and same with Jack. We know Jack can talk. I'd like to see some self-promotion from these guys. Cause I feel that these two could be elevated even further into the company. Yeah. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. So we move on to the third <laughs> match of the evening. <laughs> It's Ginha. I didn't. There's no. There's no available pictures. I have to make my own graphics for some of these matches, and there's no available pictures of Ginha. So I found a Luchador cartoon. You were very generous to the size. Oh no! This man is this. This cartoon is much larger than what Ginha was. Ginha was very skinny. But I found this one humorous, so I used it. I apologize, Ginha. Give me a give me a give me a production photo again, huh? I will happily save it, and I can put it in my graphics next time. <laughs> but <laughs> we got Ginha versus Kat Von Hees, the debuting Ginha from England. So I'm calling him a Bruchador. He's a <laughs> he's a British Luchador. He's a Bruchador. Oh, compose yourself, my boy. <laughs> but Cat early on just tossing oh. Ginha around, just. Eat. Whip, 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 eat, whip, eat. whip. Yeah, eat. going everywhere. Um, getting out snapping the fingers at one point, attacking the Ooh, arm and the yeah. hand. That's his snap was good. It was good. It was. It was very, um, very good. Yeah, uh, getting how hits a uh, dodges out of the way of a corner splash by Cat and hits a beautiful looking enziguri. Um, Cat stops the suplex into her own Northern Light suplex for two. Uh, Ginha getting dirty in this match and. Stepping on the hair, pulling the arms, and like stepping on the hair mm -hmm. is really kind of cruel. There, um, I mean, Hazuki does that too. Just saying, uh, yeah. Uh, cat with some killer, killer chops in this match, just mm -hmm. wrecking that bo that 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 Bruchador's chest. She Ooh. tenderized them titties, yeah. Hits the Samoan drop and follows it with that senton, gives it two. Uh, Gina comes back with this huge slap across the face, hits a snapmare into the house call kick, but can only get two. Uh, Cat reverses a lariat and hits a pile driver for two. Uh, Ginha, in the end, going back to those dirty ways, rakes the eyes, then rolls her up with the referee not looking in the direction of his feet, looking at Cat's shoulders, gets his feet on the ropes for the extra leverage, and Ginha gets the upset win. Yeah, this was an exciting match, though, because oh, it so really, much fun. yeah, it was very much a battle of like good and evil. He was very much the El Diablo of this kind of match, really healing it up again with those finger snaps. And he did those a few times. I was just like, Ugh! having like flashbacks to a certain person that I'm not supposed to mention because he's a pariah now. Um, but always oh, nice to see Kat. Oh, my gosh. Did she eat him around? really really good um i love seeing these new talents come in against someone as experienced and good as cap on he's as well because it as she is exactly like kb6 she's that person who will elevate the persons that she's fighting and she will elevate herself to whoever she is facing um so she made him look so good and and vice versa i really enjoyed this match it was a lot of fun and i always like seeing the debut of new talent Mm -hmm. um i didn't i should check if this guy has social media because i he would be able to market himself very very good i looked him up i can't find anything personally but i don't know you, you're better you're better at finding people's social medias than i am i know that for sure i sure am <laughs> i i go fbi on this ish if i need to yeah find us some ginha so i can get an actual picture <laughs> okay okay I'll get on it, that. It, until I get an actual production photo, I am going to keep using different cartoon luchadors to represent Gina. And I will probably die of laughter every time. We move on. RCW Heritage Championship match. It is Cody Mack taking, uh, defending his title against Mo 
Jabari. Um, this was a good match. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I I felt like it almost felt like a step off for Mo Jabari in this match. Um, learned some. We learned some info about him after the match. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was fine. Um, Cody using his power early mm-hmm. on to really overpower Mo. Keeps dropping him, working in the arm a bit. Uh, Mo gets that like that leaping shoulder block at one point to drop Cody Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, and according to Mel, Cody hitting those spicy European <laughs> uppercuts. <laughs> because they were mean. They were meaner than we're used to seeing Cody Mac. But also in this match, the crowd really turned on Mac. This is usually Mac City. He's very much the face here. Mm-hmm. But the crowd was very much behind Mo. Promo. Which, yeah. What? Promo? Is Promo. That what Promo. Oh, bro. No, no. Thought, promo. Yeah, promo. Promo. They're promo. Yeah. I mean, it could have been even more if he did some promos. Yeah. Ah, see what I did there? I, you know, and I'm disappointed because, like, Mo is a pretty popular character. I, I would love to see more promo out of him. We saw one out of Cody Mac for this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, uh, most trying to lariat Cody Mac over the top. He can't see. So it's him with a headbutt in the ring. Then mm-hmm. finally gets the lariat over the top. Most is attacking. They fight on the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, Cody gets the pump kick in the ring. Hits Snake Eyes. Then hits another pump kick, but only two. So Cody Mac just starts beating the piss out of Mo. Picks him up. One more running pump kick, and he gets the win. This match very much felt like, if I can make the comparison to, like, stardom, it felt like Utami facing Tam Nakano in that Utami really relies heavily on those shoulder blocks and shoulder tackles Mm -hmm. um, and her power to kind of put down people. And Tam relies heavily on her ability to get out of the way of those, but also has that aerial kind of aspect. I felt that that was very, very... A similar kind of thing. So I actually really enjoyed this. Yeah, we're, we're learning afterwards that there is a, a bit of a working on an injury kind of thing. Wasn't really good though, because um, I worry about these guys putting their bodies on the line for maybe not as much money as they're worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> I I do worry about that. And of course, we saw what happens when you don't manage your injuries and let them get away from you and you know top talent very great example um so yeah I, I was a little worried after that but otherwise I felt the match was very very solid you know I like my stories with the kind of different styles as mentioned with Jack O'Connor and KB6 this was very much an aerial versus a technical power background in Cody Mack and yeah I felt this was really, really solid. I don't think, though, that this should have been a title match um, just because of the injury kind of aspect to it. I felt that this should have been just a singles match. Like, uh, uh, because, like, I have Mo was at Top Talent a couple times, but this is the first time I think I've seen him in RCW in a hot minute. Hmm? in Edmonton. I know he had hmm. been working the Calgary shows, but like this is the first time I've seen him in a hot minute in Edmonton um, working in our CW show. So I felt, I feel that if you're not a full-timer at this company, probably shouldn't have your you know, debut here in a title match. You know, like there's a lot of guys there kind of earning that ish already. So I think that this match should have still happened, but I don't think it should have been a title match. I think it just should have been a singles match um, with the same outcome kind of thing, just to kind of get Mo's you know, toes wet, so to speak, in the RCW locker room. Otherwise, really, really solid match. Yeah, I, I really, I, I thought these two were good. Like, it, it wasn't like it wasn't in my top couple matches of the night, but I, I thought it was solid. Like you mm-hmm. can, you can kind of see Mo. The steps might not have been there. Like what we heard about an injury to um that again we don't we again don't know the full extent of it but like i don't want to because i'll worry more yeah but it just i I thought they had a good match for everything they did i thought it just it never really hit that final gear that never hit shifted into high gear for me in this match 
You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Never hit me that point, hit that point for me. Yeah. And that's kind of why I felt that it shouldn't have been a title match because then, you know, what happens if they face each other again and it's a non title match and they give us a better match yeah. than what this was, you know? So, yeah, um, I would like to see them go again when Mo is a little bit more 100%. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So, we move on to a match that definitely hit high gear. It's J.J. Spade versus Harlan Abbott. Hey, Abbott. Um, hey, Abbott. Holy poop. This is like, if, if I put Jack uh, Jack O'Connor and KB6 as my, as my number one, this is my number one B on this show. Like, this match was absolutely tremendous. Mm -hmm. Harlan is so mean. Even when he's a good guy. He is so mean. He is vicious. Just beating. I'm not up. convinced I was watching Harlan Abbott in this I match. I felt like I was, I was watching. I was, I, was watching I was watching Heavy Abbott here. <laughs> or, or Harlan Metal, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Heavy I mean, Abbott does not sound very nice. No. <laughs> okay, Har Harlan, Harlan Metal. Okay. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, like, man, there's a spot where he hits this like Enziguri into the corner. And literally, I watched into the corner we were sitting next to and mm -hmm. literally kicks JJ in the back of the head with that Enziguri and yeah. just follows it up with a beautiful um, X plex or release suplex, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Holy. And he's just beating the piss out of him in here. Um, JJ hits his beautiful sunset flip at one point. He gets a two count, but then a Harlem right back down, just punishing him, beating on him. Um, just just crazy. Harlan gets a cross face, but JJ is fighting to the ropes. That is, he's getting about to get a hand on the ropes. He pulls the other arm in, turns it into a rings of Saturn, but uh, JJ gets the foot on the ropes. Um, Harlan hits a Sends JJ to the floor, hits a tope suicida, look look really good. Or uh, and then he tosses JJ in to come back in the ring, and JJ just gets up, runs, and hits his own tope suicida to Harlan on the yeah. floor. Um, JJ just with the drop kick off the top, uh, he gets on the attack, hits that standing moonsault for two. Man, he's got mm -hmm. this guy's got some got some skills. Um. They're fighting. Harlan gets JJ up top, but he fights him off, hits a tornado DDT out of the corner, and gets a delayed two count. Um, Harlan comes off the shoulders, uh, off of JJ's shoulders, and hits a forearm to the back of the head, then follows it up with what I can only describe. It looked very similar to me to Shawn Michaels' teardrop suplex from way back in the early 90s before he, the Sweet Chain music became his finisher. He used to do something called the teardrops. It looked like a teardrop suplex. Uh, he got a two count out of that. Looked really good. Uh, JJ fights back. Ushi got all she. I was so excited when he hit that. He yes. goes to the top. Uh, but Harlan, uh, as he goes for the moonsault, Harlan just puts the feet up and just boots uh, JJ in the face as he's coming down. Just, he goes crashing, picks him up, healer driver. And, and Harlan Abbott is your winner, but absolutely phenomenal match. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I love and appreciate about JJ Spade is that he is never going any less than 110,000%. Hmm. Never. He is always a hundred. Just go, 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 go. He gives everything in the matches that he goes into. And it's just you can just feel the energy of it. I love it. But then you combine that with someone like Harlan. And you know I'm not the biggest fan of Harlan as a person, but his wrestling is just fracking phenomenal. This match was killer. There's, did you mention the superplex? There was at one point a superplex mm. where freaking JJ just flat out. Like they, the bounce that Harlan got was freaking crazy. These guys went hard. I absolutely loved it. Mm. So good. So good. There's not I much to, I can add to that. I got to talk to JJ. Uh, I don't know if it's during intermission or after the show, but I was mm -hmm. telling him, like, dude, like, just the selling and the, the, the baby face in peril that he does so well. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. He conveys such emotion and just everything in, in how he goes. And I, I absolutely love it. So, yeah. I agree. I agree. He really does have that 
ability to um, gain sympathy from the crowd. He has this like silent charisma that is able to just pull you in as a viewer and make you relate to him and make you like sympathize with what's going on. I loved it. Great character mm -hmm. work. Oh, hundred mm -hmm. percent. So from there we go to we went to intermission. We come back with my one C match of the night. Is this your rating system that you're saying? No, it's like I like like I, they're all like my number one match of the night. But but I put Jack at one A, then Harlan. And, oh, and okay, okay, okay. I get it. One C. Oh no, I, my, I, I I have a new bagel rating. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. So, okay. uh, so I'll I'll give Jack and KB6 10 <laughs> bagels out of 10. I'll give Harlan and uh and JJ 9.9 .9 bagels out of 10, and this was 9.8 bagels out of 10. Okay, so I all, understand. They were all that close together for me, and what I and how I enjoyed this match. We have the Christians are taking on the debuting in RCW debut of Fusion, or mm -hmm. as I like to call them, Fushin. Because <laughs> there's two S's. It's not fusion, it's fushion. But whatever. Did did you not ask the Spanish speaker next to you how you would say his name? Should be he because he only thought there was one S. Then when I told him there was two S's, he was very confused. So he didn't even say he didn't confirm anything. Regardless, like you know how I feel about you mucking up people's names. <laughs> oh, that fusion versus Christian Star was absolutely true. Yeah. As Mel would say, all of the flippity dippity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dippy bowl. Yeah. Uh Star the beautiful slingshot spear. Fusion getting a Spanish fly off the top. Star coming back with a standing Spanish fly. Um the chops. The oh. chops by fusion. Oh. He didn't just tenderize them titties. He like inverted them. They put them on his back. Yeah, um, Star getting that, the, that Osprey backflip into a Canadian Destroyer. Mm -hmm. oh, so good. Uh, that was Fusion, so smooth, too. Fusion sending Star to the floor at one point. Hits a tote bacon helo. Star then go, gets back in the ring and hits his own tote base to his Sita to respond. Um, uh, Star's up to the top. Fusion pushes Star off the top. Hits a frog splash off the top for two. Uh, later in the match, corkscrew super os cutter by Christian Star for two. Then he goes to the top, four fifty, and he gets the win again. Awesome, awesome match for these two. Gotta find out if that's what he calls it. Your buddy's with him. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care what you want to call it. You have to ask Christian what he wants to to be called. If he is, if he's okay with it being an os cutter, keep calling it an os cutter. But for me, I like to personalize moves to the people doing them. And this is a star cutter to me. But anyway, um, first off, if you don't follow Christian Star, please do. Guy is promoting himself wonderfully. Um, I'd like to see promos coming out of him because I feel it's the one thing that he lacks in. It's the ability to speaky. But his ability to, you know, walk the walk is a whole other thing entirely just come back from texas i think it was mm -hmm. where he went down with uh, dalton rogue there holy heck and crap some of the clips coming out of there were so crazy so good so go follow him on his socials and book him this was crazy though this was a it felt like a straight up lucha match to me and i kind of like loved it because i do like to watch lucha libre but my problem is the Lucha Libre rules are really fractured and confusing and I don't speak Spanish and I don't have the patience to try to figure out what the rules are. But when you Americanize it and you take away all the crazy rules from it, it ends up feeling so good. And this match was just from start to finish. Go, 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 go. They had the crowd in the palm of their hands the whole match. Um, this was so good. So, so good. I don't have anything else to add to it, man. Yeah. Again, amazing match. So just mm -hmm. the flippy dip, flippy dippy, as Mel would say, the flippy dippy. Flippy dippy. We move on. I'm going to say this was my least favorite match of the night. And it has Son of Irish, who is usually my most favorite matches of the night. And because I don't know what the hell happened with this match. I do. 
why so i thought raj was the good guy in here in i thought so too and he comes out and just starts like he like push he's shoving the ref out of the way to punch soy boy in the balls and just in the tree of woe too he had him in the tree of woe just pecked him in the pecker it's like dude you out healed the main heel of this company yeah i don't know i was very much like it it, it, it came off weird nothing seemed to flow quite right in this match Mm. in my opinion it just i don't know it just didn't really work for me uh so i was working so i was working the shoulder in the match um Mm -hmm. Raj is getting really vicious with the strikes and like not in like a I'm a baby face getting beat you down. It was like it, it I feel like he was channeling his champagne sing character, which is a heel, I guess, in TNA, but trying to be a baby face with it and it really didn't work. I don't know. I don't know. It just it just Matt, I don't know. Everything seemed really off here. Um Raj gets a Texas Clover leaf at one point. Um, he did hit a power bomb into the high angle Boston Crab, which I was I, which was cool to see because I only really we really only ever see that in Japan. But the yeah, power bomb into that's the high true. Angle, yeah, that was it, that was a cool move to watch him see him do. But mm-hmm. um, it was really funny also to hear you try start explaining it to Andreas. I'm like it's a high angle crab, and he's like, "What?" It was just like <laughs> he just didn't get it. We had to send him on a side quest. Yeah, side quest. Um, at the end of this match, uh, so anyway, goes for the Oz cutter, but it's revert. But Raj reverses, goes for a slam, but then so anyway, reverses the slam into like a school, like a, a small package, and gets the win out of nowhere and just bails. Uh, uh, he he also his feet were on the ropes for right. that pin as well, and the ref was facing the ropes. So yeah. like the ref absolutely saw what was going on. It was a cluster. It was a clusterfuck. I'm going to flat out say it. And again, it was a, not a clusterfuck because of the guys not being able to physically perform. It was a clusterfuck because there was a complete character breakdown. Raj came into this company in January for that Rumble match. And he did the same thing then that he did with this, which was fudge up stories that were already happening. Um, at that point in the Rumble, in January, Son of Irish had just turned heel. There was a distinct lackluster on that. There was a feud happening still between, I think it was Cody Mack and Bobby Sharp. They were in the ring together. At no point in time did they interact, especially since Raj had gotten out there. This was a continuation of that clustery. He, it was like Raj came into the company not knowing anything about the characters, the people he's working with, or any of the storylines such as they barely are in this company. And the only one that was happening was between Son of Irish and his heel journey and Cody Mack. This is a Gladiator Cup winner here. What the fuck? Okay, compose yourself, Mogul. Here's my thing. Get more angry. (laughs) You came into the, the match. Raj came into the match wanting to be a face, wanting people to cheer him. That was obvious from the time he came out of the curtain. So to me, that means you're a face. Wrestle like a face. And there's a way to be aggressive and still be a face. He did not do this. So it's like you either want people to cheer you or you're a heel. Make your choice, man. You don't get to have both. You out-healed the healiest heel in the company. The he I don't even recall Son of Irish even being able to pop off any healy shit. Not Do really. you? No. So it's like, man, I get it. You're a TNA superstar, but like you're already there. <laughs> Your job in this situation was to help put this guy over. And in that, you failed B- badly. And then, and then, the worst part afterwards is the little promo that he tried to cut in the ring. Oh, son of Irish, you little shit, blah, blah, blah. No disqualification match next month. No. You and I, I think, were the only people in that room when he was like, does anybody want to see that? No. No, because it's just going to be this 2.0. Well, and then he said he would fight, he would fight the ref. And I was like, yeah, do that. Fight the ref. Do that instead. 
At least you fighting the ref is entertaining to me because you're beating up Smalls, and I'm good with you beating up Smalls. But <laughs> yeah, and the next thing is, why is Smalls the only ref working this show? Where's Rosa? Yeah, yeah no, we know Rosa. where Ben was, but where's Rosa? Yeah, no. Where was where that ben... other guy who you like in the sweats, who's equally as bad as Smalls? But at least Avon's at least it's an, a, a different ref. It is, but he's still just as bad. Ben was at LPW. That at least made sense. But Same, like, and, man. and Matt Matt Slaps was taking a nap somewhere. I think. I think so. He was yeah. like, I, I, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I don't. This was disappointing because there were three reasons, three reasons that I came to this show. Two of them are Cody's. One of them was the main event. And all three of the matches that I came specifically for. I mean, I would have to rate the Mac one the highest of the three. This was the last, and it disappoints me because I get my tickets from this little shit. Yeah. Just it, to it, see it, him not get the showing that I felt that he deserved. Yeah. Disappointing. Disappointed. So we move on to the main event of the evening. It's for is for the real RCW, the real number one championship in RCW, the RCW North American Championship. Mitch Clark defending against the debuting Chase Dangenhart. And yes. Finally, tip touch because yes. we got we were we me Mel and and Andreas were doing our, our violent we were the violent tip touch yes. together and Mitch Mitch saw he walked over and violent tip touched us and then immediately went to the ring ignoring everyone else. Swoon. Actually, life. before the show, I ran into him. I, I I just said hello to him. I was coming in and I shook his hand and then he went wait 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 and did and did this and I went like this and I went. Eh. <laughs> it was yes. Great. Shout out to Cat for helping me invent that. Um, good. I thought the first like five to seven minutes of this match were really Solid. good. Like, yeah. you really suck. Is Chase Dankenhart is a is a former MMA fighter just like Mitch Clark. So when they were hitting each other, when they were rolling with each other on the mat, like wrestling, doing that, mm -hmm. it all flowed so nicely. It just everything seemed to just uh go it just mm -hmm. flowed for the first few minutes and then it just they're slamming each other uh they're, they're they're on the outside mitch whipping uh uh chase into the chairs in the crowd on our side and they go to the other side and chase whips mitch into the chairs mm -hmm. probably worse even worse like it would look wor even worse for mitch going into the chairs than it did for chase um, yeah yeah when they disappeared we were kind of like ooh, did not yeah. look good uh, they they get in. Uh, they're fighting back and forth. Uh, su Chase gets a suplex. It's a big gut wrench. Mm -hmm. But then he started to gas out. And again, not everybody has conditioned themselves to go in a long match, especially with a talent the level of a Mitch Clark and the pace that he works at. Mm -hmm. So there, it, it, it's not like Chase completely sucked but you could see it's him slowing down things got a little sloppy at times um mm -hmm. but again I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for now i just feel like this should have been a non-title match in his first debuting match maybe shouldn't have been up for a title um mitch does get a snap dragon at one point chase does fight, come back with a big belly to belly suplex for two which looked really good mm -hmm. um at the end of this match though chase uh, catches uh, Mitch with his beautiful Muay Thai knee strike to the face, just that jumping knee strike to the face, and just drops. Oh, solid, him. yeah. He gets a two count. So they're coming. Mitch just pops up out of nowhere, puts Chase on his shoulder. Ludwig Spindly Van Driver. Ludwig Van Driver. Spindly Bentley. Ludwig Van Driver for the win. Spindly Bentley for the win. And then after in the match, Mitch came out, kids all wanting to slap his hand, nothing. He came over, violent tip, touched us again, and left. Love of my life. Tip touched twice in one night. This is my last rad that I needed a tip touch from, too. Um <laughs> and you got the ex you got the violent tip touch too. I got the violent tip touch too, yes. Um 
Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. The, again, the first couple of minutes, first of all, first of all, though, I also have to shout out Chase for putting out a really good promo. Mm -hmm. a really good promo for this. So there were two promos that came out of this, Cody Mack and Chase. And I was very happy because that was more promotion than I've seen anybody else do in the last little while, top talent. Um, so that was phenomenal. I'm very happy with that. I also was mentioning to you before we came on here, um, Chase was kind of giving me, is it Dax? Dax Harwood was his name in, in WWE? Uh, the bald one. I think that's his name now in AEW. Okay, well, whatever the bald one was from FTR, when he was in WWE, that was kind of what I made the comparison to. It was a very efficient wrestler, but if something happened that kind of threw him off his game, it became very, very hard for him at that time to get mentally back into the game. And I feel kind of that might have happened with Chase a little bit. I feel like he's a very competent and good wrestler and fighter. I just feel that maybe after a few little things, he might have gotten a little into his head and started overthinking everything. And I got to say, it's just, I feel after talking to a lot of wrestlers about stuff like that, you got to have it in the same way that you do eyeliner. Don't think about it. Just do it. That's yeah. how you, you just keep going. And um, that's something that, that FTR has actually worked on. I used to hate FTR when they were in WWE, specifically the bald one for this reason. But it was after he gained a lot more experience, traveled a lot more, wrestled a lot more people, that it seemed that he found his niche and his confidence in his ability to just not think it, just do it. And now, now I actually have a tremendous amount of respect and actual, like, actually enjoy watching FTR and the job that they do because of it. So, again, I also agree with you in that this probably shouldn't have been a title match. This probably should have been just a, a debut match because now he's going to have the opportunity to train more, get even better. And then, again, like the whole situation with Mo, we can see him come back and have an even better match because what again what happens if he comes back and he has a non-title match with mitch and that match was better than the title match it's gonna be a little contradictive you want your title matches to be the most elevated matches on your card so yeah i, I agree that this probably should have been a non-title match um but uh, overall a pretty solid yeah. fighting kind of match i enjoyed yeah. it anyway i thought i again i thought these two did really well together especially in those first like five to seven minutes of the match where again it's just very technical again again this is purely from a fan perspective but i i saw chase slow down i it, mm -hmm. it, you could see that he was really huffing and puffing there and again it it did affect uh, mitch still carried them through to a, a, a mm -hmm. fairly good rest of the match not that, that anything was wrong with this match but it just you could see it in a, a couple of things that chase was doing got a little sloppy and mm. again, that's, and I feel like that's purely experience. Um, I agree. Pretty sure he's newer to the game of professional wrestling. And again, as he gets mm. better, he's going to, his cardio, his pacing will get so much better. And he'll mm -hmm. be, and again, with the background that he has, I feel like he can get that cardio to be mm -hmm. in, into that wave. But like this man's going to be able to go 20, 25 minutes with a Mitch Clark 100%. And, just, and keep that pace up. It's just, it's experience. And there was a spot in here where Mitch ended up dodging out of the corner and then just punches Chase in the butt before, before <laughs> hitting the backdrop suplex. Yeah. So good. So good. <laughs> I remember turning to you. I'm like, did he, did he just butt punch him? Yep. <laughs> we all started laughing and that was great. That was tremendous. Yeah. Oh, Gotta love a, a good show. butt punch. Gotta love a good butt punch. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you gotta love a good butt punch because it's better than sticking someone's thumb up their butts. Team Steve, which again, let me reiterate, this show was fracking phenomenal, probably because there was no Team Steve on the card. There were no tag team matches at all. There were no tag team titles on either More show team at all. Steve. More Team Steve. More team Steve. Wait, no, Let's no. Let's be honest. Yeah, Sorry, I was going to say. I was hallucinating. I would... I'm hallucinating. I, I shouldn't be You're saying Delulu. that. You're Delulu. Yeah. 
I would rather I got team, lobotomize I got team Steve myself confused than watch any, them every other, I got Team Steve confused with every other tag team in the world. <laughs> I would rather lobotomize myself at a show than watch Team Steve wrestle again and stick their thumbs up other people's butts. Just because you have a pegging kink doesn't mean we need to see it and doesn't mean the children need to see it either. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe let's get off of that. And we're going to get out of here, oh, though. Oh, we forgot, though. There were so many children. We forgot something very important. Importante. Oh, Ronnie winning the the the, the draw and a, a bunch of us Again? yelling fixed? A bunch no. of us yelling fixed? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Remember the kid? That son of Irish made cry. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> oh, he just started sobbing. It made my life. Nothing like seeing children cry. God damn crotch goblins. Semen demons. All right, let's take us into the outro, sir. You can find me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre and Melbourne Wrestling Talk or in our comment section of our YouTube page, youtube.com, site at Andre and Melbourne Wrestling Talks. You can find all our Japanese wrestling content over at A Plus Productions. You can find them on Facebook or at A Plus, A Plus Productions.com. That is E. H P L U S P O R D U C I or D U C T I O N S dot com. A plus productions, like A, like you're Canadian. A plus can productions. Check them out. As evidenced by the logo. <laughs> I know. Just, I'm just, just saying. Just saying. You can also find myself over at twitch.tv slash our local establishment. On, or on youtube.com slash at our local sponsor. I will be returning to the Marvel Airwaves uh, with my boy, uh, old Ed, uh, on Wednesday, September 18th. We're going to be back to chat all about the first two episodes of, Ag of Agatha All Along. Uh, we'll be back talking uh, that uh, on the 18th. So we just we took a few, few weeks off. We're going to do we're going to do some more uh, rebounds in this time, but I just needed a little break. so. We'll be back on the 18th for Agatha All Along, episodes one and two. Check that out. I also want to give a shout-out to our boy Mike the Ref over at Backbreaker Video, where he simulcasts all of our stuff. You can go com slash at Backbreaker Video. You can find him live doing all his uh, AW watch-alongs over on Twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref and all the gaming that he does over there. Go check him out. It's a great time to hang out with fun people in the chat. And watch Mike play some video games. If you want to see replays of that gaming content, go to youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore game where you can find content from him. Mr. PJC, this little guy right here, Rick Jules. He's he's all hit in the middle here now. And there for a week when cast. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. I had a great conversation with Kayla J yesterday about the Bash in Berlin and the No Mercy show. So I'm uh, I'm thinking I need to get her on uh on one of my shows soon to talk about some women's wrestling. But we love Kayla J here. Where can they find you? <laughs> if you're wanting to follow a Melbourne, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melbourne. You can follow her on everything else, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Mel Ball Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming Japanese wrestling update with this guy over here every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And then we will let you know on social media. This week's episode is going to be a pre-recorded episode because we will be attending WWE Friday Night Smackdown. That's going to be live here in Edmonton. I had to look up the roster to see who was going to be there because no, I am no, so out of no, no, no. I had to I had to send you the roster. Uh no, you took so long to send me the roster. I went online and found it myself. Thank you. I still, I still sent it to you. Yeah, well, it wasn't the pinnacle of my information, so simmer down over there, hot shot. Um, yeah, so I had to look it up because I'm so out of touch with WWE. It's not a programming that I regularly watch, so I had no idea who was there. And once I found out, I was like, Andre, who are these people? I'm wearing this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Part have any booty me... shirts. <laughs> I mean, part of me wanted to wear my Bullet Club shirt, my Nightmare Club shirt. Yeah, it's Cody related. You should. It is. It is. But um, I think I'm going to go with my Ripley one. 
I don't care that she's not on that show. I'm going to wear that. Any hoozles. Friday night will be a pre-recorded show on Japanese wrestling update, but it will still be airing at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. So go watch that because we got a lot of ish to talk about. There's been a lot of things that happened specifically in stardom that Amel Ball needs to bitch about. Mm -hmm. What else? You can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We should have a show coming out on Friday as well because we have a lot of stuff that we need to talk about. And Astrid is chomping at the bits to talk about some stuff about stardom that I've pointed out to her. So we're going to have some fun with that. So again, you can find us on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. Hopefully we have a show coming out. I believe it would be about 4 p.m. Mountain Time on Friday. But stay tuned to our socials to find out exactly when. If you're wanting to watch an RCW show, we will leave a link in the description box down below for their event right. But you can also go to their Facebook page where you can find a link to said event right. Or you can get in touch with some of your favorite local wrestlers, get rid of some of them fees, still get to go see a show, and you get to come hang out with me and Andre. There's a couple other people that we've seen there who are doing some fun little reviews on there. We have to get over and meet them. There's that, um, oh, I can't remember the name right now. I meant in wrestling review. He's been doing star reviews. I'll send you the link. It looks awesome. He looks fun. Yes. Still Go to RCW. Stealing my gimmick. He did stars, not bagels, you doof. No, but stealing my Edmonton wrestling reviewing gimmick. <laughs> I mean, but my gimmick since 2015. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Go on with your bad self then. <laughs> anyway, support local. Hashtag support local. Hashtag support your local wrestlers. Anyway, Andre, my trusted friend and colleague. Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful Pip Pop? Hashtag. This looks like prominence almost. Hashtag. It almost looks like prominence. Hashtag. <laughs> anyway. Only to you. Uh, I yeah. just want to thank everybody once again uh, for supporting us here. Uh, if you're watching, whether you're watching on Backbreaker video, whether it's on your Melbourne Wrestling Talk, thank you so very, very much. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. We would love talking to you about all the professional wrestling that we watch. Uh, don't forget to share us up. Tell your friends, family, and people that know how to clean the dishes up in their house. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Do you not know how to clean up your dishes? No, I'm just going to go do dishes after this. That's why. Oh, I was okay. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that being said, I am your mobile. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. <laughs>